uh, what we're going to do now is get into the smoke, okay? So, the smoke essentially operates in the same way as the fluid, in that it needs a domain object for the simulation to take place in, then it needs an object to send in the smoke, and then it you know operates with obstacles and stuff. So, it's really, really similar. So, what we need to do first of all, I just hit Shift C just to uh, move the 3D cursor at the right point there. Um, what I'm going to do first of all is add in our domain cube. Okay, so again, this is the area in which the smoke is going to be uh, simulated into. Okay, so it's the, it's already the right size. You don't need to scale it or anything like that because it's the same you know default size as the other cube. And uh, I'm going to hit G, then Z, and then holding down Control, I'm just going to move it down. To about there I think that's fine okay because what we're gonna make the smoke do is uh, come up here and then hit this uh, this same collision object right there and then you know create a kind of a bubble or I don't know what you want to call it type uh, type shape okay so um, yeah we need to now turn this cube to be um, to be our smoke domain okay so in the physics panel click smoke and then from these options here select domain okay so the resolution as you can probably guess it operates as the resolution of the smoke so um, for my def uh, my finished um, finished look I set my resolution to be 100 you can set that as much as you like but 100 it's uh, it's gonna eat up a lot already so don't worry about that and the other big one I mean the others you can pretty much leave as they are but the other big one is the smoke high resolution now what that does is it applies a kind of turbulence and finer details to the outside of the smoke. So if you imagine that this, you know, default resolution here is going to be creating a nice thick mesh with nice thick plumes in it, uh, plumes, plumes of smoke, I don't know what you call it. Um, the smoke high resolution is going to be, you know, displacing that surface and creating a, um, you know, a nice, sharper, detailed looking smoke. So make sure you turn that on. The higher you set that to, the more and more it's going to eat it up. Like seriously, you know, that could like almost double it just by, you know, for one, turning that on and then going up a level. So I'm going to leave it as division one and that should suit it just fine. But go nuts if you like, it's entirely up to you. Now the smoke cache under here, there's an important one, which is the end amount. That's the end frame amount. So matching our animation, we're going to set this to 50. Perfect. Okay. So everything else is fine. Now what we need to do is uh, actually input the smoke okay now the way the smoke operates is uh, you need an object just like you do with the fluid but it actually uses particles to actually um, create the smoke so first of all let's create our object so I'm gonna use a circle okay it doesn't really matter well it does kind of matter <laughs> anyway we're gonna use a circle and then if you press T to bring up the toolbar underneath these circle options here I'm gonna click on fill and that just means that it now uh, has a little vertice in the center there, and it's actually a fill, um, full circle, whatever. And I'm going to move this all the way down to the bottom there. Well, not all the way down, you know, somewhere about there. And I'm going to scale it in to be about roughly that size, okay? I don't know what size that is. It's about that size. You kind of get the drift. Okay. So um, this is our domain object again. So with this object here selected, I'm going to click Smoke, and I'm going to click Flow. Okay. Now the Flow options here, um, essentially a lot of it operates off the um, the particles. Okay. So you can see it's uh, it's got particle system here, and it's already assigned a particle system for you. So if you go to the particle settings here, it's already created a particle system for you. It's got most of the right settings already set up. Um, what we need to do is just set the end time for our particles okay and the amount I'm gonna set that to be 20,000 now you're gonna to want to play with these depending on you know what sort of settings you're working with um, this is just what I found to be you know works well for me um, and the velocity that's important I'm gonna set that to be 15 okay now the, the velocity that's kind of how fast it gets ejected out of it so actually I might just turn this off just so that I can show you how the particles are operating right now so if we just animate that, mm, yep, you can see that the uh, the particle is actually shooting out the bottom there, okay? Um, that's because the normals are around the wrong way, okay? So if you go into edit mode, and then just underneath here, I'm going to click recalculate and then flip direction, okay? So now, if we animate this, we should see the particles shooting up out of the top. So that means they're now going in the right direction. Anyway, so I'm going to just click flow again, turn that back on. 
Um, so going out at 15 speed, that's very important. Um, now underneath the f uh, smoke settings here, um, what we need to do is turn on initial velocity. And what that's going to do is it's going to use the normal speed that we put in here, 15, and it's going to use that to force it outward. So it's going to kind of come out like a flamethrower. So that's how you get that really fast burst moving smoke. If you don't turn that on, it's just going to use these particles to slowly drift the smoke upwards um, and into the scene, which you don't want. You want it to be, you know, full on blasting smoke, fire, whatever you want to call it. Um, now the multiplier, I'm going to set that to 2, and essentially what that does is I, I assume it, it's how it works. It just doubles this, the 15, it just turns it up to 30 or whatever. At least that's what I think it is. Anyway, that's the one we're going to use. Okay, so I'm going to move this back up to here so that it's inside our domain box right there. And um, so that it doesn't get confused because once you've got two simulations going inside Blender, it can get confused and it can try and rewrite the bakes of another one. Um, now that we've got the fluid in... Um, you know, in a position that we like it. I mean, again, like I said before, play with the different frames. Um, you know, once you've got one that you like, go ahead and just leave it on that. And then underneath the modifier here, we're going to hit apply. Now that's a one way ticket. It's um, once you click apply, it just freezes that model in its location and you can't do any baking after that. So make sure you've got it set up. You've got it looking good because once you hit apply, that's it. Boom. There we go. So now if you go into edit mode, you can see that you can now go ahead and edit this like a regular looking mesh. Okay, cool. Now, one final thing, just so that I don't make the same mistake um, like I did last time, is with our object, whoop, that object right there, um, we want to use this in our smoke simulator. So, in the physics panel right here, um, oh, I just noticed I never actually even applied these um, solidify and all that. Anyway, I might as well just do that now. There you go. I don't even think we needed to add any of that then. That kind of proves that point. So it, it was just using the base mesh on it before. Um, but anyway, okay. So um, yeah, what I want to do is I actually want to increase the size of this. Now you might be thinking, why do we need to do that, Andrew? Because it should be the same size as the fluid so that it matches it, yada, yada, yada. Um, however, the smoke kind of behaves differently and it'll fill up that convex kind of looking shape there um, and it'll just kind of overflow out the sides of it so it'll kind of hit it and just like kind of bounce around so it needs to be a lot bigger so that the smoke can hit it then peel around and then kind of shoot outwards okay so these are just settings you know things that I've learnt um, so I'm hoping that you'll um, yeah take heed of my advice and um, do the same so let's just check it's on the right one yep so underneath smoke make sure that it's set to collision this, you've got the domain settings, everything set up, ready to go. And then our object here is throwing particles into the air and the particles are going to give birth to the smoke, if that makes sense. So it's all set up, it's ready to go. Let's go ahead now underneath the smoke case settings and click bake all dynamics. And we're finished, there you go. So it's not very noticeable. You've got to really zoom in to see it. Um, but you should be able to see the faint outlines um, of some smoke there. So if you jump forward and backwards in the frames, you'll be able to see different uh, smoke patterns or whatever. Uh, but something around that is okay. I think probably uh, the size of this, uh, that object right there is probably a little bit too thick because you can see the amount of smoke there. It doesn't really match the same size as the fluid, but... Um, it, it's all right. It's not too bad. So I think we'll um, I think we'll use that, and that is good to go. Okay. So if you were to render this right now, um, chances are you would see duh, 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 this. There you go. It's looking fantastic, isn't it? It's just a big uh, cube with some grey matter above it. it. Looks very boring. So now what we're going to do is get into the materials. Okay. So first thing I'm going to do is. Um, I'm going to remove the objects that we don't need, okay? So we're done with this little fluid um, inflow object at the top there. We can go ahead and delete that. And we are also done with this object right here, our obstacle. Okay, cool. All right, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to apply a material to... Actually, you know, before we do that, <laughs> um, I think it's probably best if we just um, get the camera lined up to be where we, uh, where we want it. So... Uh, in the front view mode here, I'm going to go ahead and hit Control alt number pad 0 and that's going to snap the camera to uh, my location. I'm now just going to zoom this in, like so, 
and um, I'm now going to change the aspect ratio of the scene. So I'm going to use the uh, the resolution that 3D World Magazine gave me, and uh, that was 3,000 by 5,000 or 5,000 by 3,000. I think I got it wrong, but anyway. Um, and uh, so now it's got kind of like this vertical type look to it, and uh, I'm going to rotate it so that the fluid is at the bottom, like so. And I want to uh, just kind of tilt it on its side, like this, and make it so that the fluid is coming out of that corner and hitting there, and then the fire is coming out of that corner. So I might just have to move that across just a little bit, like so. But you can play around with the composition at the end. I'm sure that'll be fine. Um, so um, for the fluid, so yes, all right, here we go. Um, so I'm just going to um, apply material to it. It's already got one there. And um, the most important one, of course, is the transparency. You don't want it showing up looking like milk. Um, so I'm just going to uh, turn on transparency and turn the alpha amount down to a 0 0.1 um, or a 0 0.2 even. I think that's that should be fine. And um, you get pretty basic transparency options if you leave it at Z transparency. So I'm going to turn on ray trace, and that's going to allow me to click the uh, index of refraction. So I'm going to turn that up to 1.1, which I think is the uh, the accurate amount for water, or it's 1.11 or something like that. Anyway, that'll be fine, leaving it like that. Um, a big important one is the depth as well. That is the, um, the little description that tells you the maximum allowed number of light into refractions. And essentially what that means is if you zoom in here, you can see you've got many different droplets overlapping uh, water in the background as well. So if you left it at two, you're going to have uh, just the like the solid material showing up. So it's essentially just going to black it out um, because it's just kind of limiting itself at two kind of transparency passes, if that makes sense. Um, so I'm going to turn that all the way up to six. So just so that it allows more of that, you know, good refractive looking type stuff. Um, okay, now underneath shadow, I'm not sure if this is really going to matter because it's kind of, um, you know, its own transparent shadows or whatever, but there's a function here for receive transparent. Um, so again, I, I w couldn't really notice much of a difference, but we're going to turn that on anyway, just so that it receives transparent shadows, if that makes any sense. And for the specularity, I'm going to turn on Wardiso, Wardiso. And uh, turn the slope all the way down to something small like that. So you get a nice, very, very sharp looking um, type reflex. So it's the closest thing to a real reflection, if that makes any sense. Okay. Um, all right. Well, that's all well and good. Um, the color of it is up to you. I'm going to go for a lightish blue color like so. Um, and that's just to, um, you know, fake it a bit, make it look like it's some nice blue looking water or whatever. I'm going to go ahead and save that now. And over here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add a lamp to be at the base of this fluid here. So I'm going to uh, move the cursor to our fluid object there. So it's right in the middle. And then I'm going to add an area lamp like so. And I'm just going to move that up and just place it so that it's at the base right there. Now I'm going to change the distance to be five, I think, uh, maybe three. I think three is probably better suited. Maybe even two. There you go. So you just want it to be kind of Excuse me, you want to be peeking off at kind of where the, sorry, <coughs> uh, at the end of where the, uh, where the fluid is. And the size of it is, uh, I'm going to set that to two, just to make the, uh, you know, the size of the area there just looking a little bit nicer. And uh, it's quite slow to move around in Blender. It's just kind of, um, I think it's because you've got the smoke and the fluid as well, but it's kind of laggy a bit. Sorry about that. Um, okay, so we've got that now. Let's go ahead and give it a render and we'll, uh, we'll see how that looks. Um, actually, I'm, actually, you probably just see a huge cube in the way because you've got the smoke there. Um, yeah, because the, the smoke cube, we haven't set up the materials for that yet. Um, but you can see down here, you've got something that is, you know, reminiscent to water. It's not perfect, but Blender's internal render engine isn't perfect. It's, uh, it's not very good at doing, um, you know, this refractive kind of stuff. However, with cycles being introduced very, very shortly, it should be. So looking forward to, uh, to when that's in the stable release of Blender. That's going to be really exciting.